All right, today we're going to talk about how you can figure out if your quadcopter has a bad gyro. It's kind of hard to detect. Now, was that a bad gyro or was that just a bad tune? We're going to talk about how you can figure out which is which. Okay, so there's lots of times with reviewing flight footage that people will have bad mechanical issues that they'll think it's a firmware thing or something other. And gyros are no different here. You can see in this flight there's some bobble and some wobble and it's really hard to tell what's what. You think it's just a tuning issue or a filter issue and in this specific case it's a bad gyro. Uh, whether that's electrical issue or uh, something just bad with the gyro sensor itself on the flight control board, really the only fix for this specific scenario is to recognize what the true issue is and address it, which is a different flight controller. I don't know what was really causing the gyro to be bad in this specific scenario, but a different flight controller solved the issue and then the, really the tune just came together after that. So I've talked about a lot in the past that, you know, there's a lot of people in the hobby that don't use black box or, you know, it's just a little too technical. But I'll tell you, some of the stuff you cannot figure out without looking at the, jar, the black box. Any quad that I ever receive for tuning or any of my personal builds, the first thing I do is take a good log and to see if the mechanical setup is sound. How is the gyro noise? How is the you know, the mechanical setup looking for low frequency oscillations, things of that nature. I really feel like I don't know what a quad is really like until I look at that black box data. So let's take a look at the black box data for this specific quad and see how we can figure out what bad gyro data looks like and where we can pinpoint that, hey, the gyro sensor for whatever reason, just bad flight controller design or bad electrical isolation or whatever, that the bad, it's data that's coming in bad for the gyro that you're never going to be able to overcome with any filter changes or PID tune changes. You just really need to replace the flight control board. So for this specific quad, this is a quad I received from somebody for the filter tuning service. And this was the first log I received from them. And the first thing I noticed that the gyro data was bad. And it was important to notice that because obviously to help somebody tune something, you have to have at least a half decent mechanical setup where it's, you're not going to be able to really be pleased with the outcome. I mean, you can try to work around it with a tune and filtering, but it's, you're just not going to be happy with the end result. So the, the best thing to do is fix the mechanical issue and then go on with the tuning. Obviously, black box logging is the best way to look under the hood. You know, it's just like a brand new car. You pop that hood see what the engine looks like. That's what black box logging is. So we popped the hood, got some logging on it, lined it up with the HD. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at trace template setup number four on the keyboard. And we're gonna go ahead and scrub the log here. What we can recognize right away from bad dry row data is it typically shows up through a sharp flip or roll. So what the first indicator of it is, let me turn off the background, is if you start to see this, where the D-term noise on trace setup number four is, you know, fairly regular D-term noise, and then all of a sudden you have some really big spiking. So it will usually show up when you have high electrical demand on the motor. So it would be when you're going into a move or arresting a sharp move that you'll see this spiking occur. And it can be just the faulty mechanical of the gyro fingers or something that the, the flight control board is, doesn't have enough electrical isolation from the ESCs or there's not enough capacitance on board or just the design of the flight controller board is not good. I, it's hard to really isolate what the cause is, but in all the cases I've seen, they've had to replace the flight control board in its entirety to, to resolve the issue. Many cases I recommend doing a different flight control board manufacturer. And this specific one, this is a Kakute F7 HDV. And this seems to have it on the roll axis. So, so these 
are not specific to cheap no-name brand boards. I mean, you're talking Luminaire Lux, you're talking Kukute, HGLRC is the other one. So these are pretty well-known manufacturers and pretty well-revered boards, and they're still having these issues. So I don't know if they're in isolation or in big groups or whatnot, but at least we can look at what the symptoms look like and then know if we have that specific problem or not. So when you're flying it, you're feeling, you know, if you're having bounce back or it feels just kind of out of control or a bad tune, that's your first indication. And then what I would recommend from there is capturing a log just to review the noise profile. And you can see we have these big juts here in the D term. That's where you're going to start. That's where you really start to see it. The D term kind of goes crazy. And that's where you start to have that out of control feeling. And you can see it here as well. Now here, this is on the entry of the move, not on the exit and just keep going through here you can see it it's on the entry and the exit of the move i'm sorry that was on trace setup zero if we go to trace setup four you can see the motor trace is kind of going crazy here and that's that out of control feel that i'm talking about and you can keep scrubbing this down through again you'll see when its motors are ramping up now here on the pitch access we don't have the issue so it's specifically isolated to the roll is confusing to me why it's like that so it's always just like one axis or another it's never typically both that i see so on some of those other ones it was the pitch axis like the lux and the zeus but on this uh, kakute it looks like it's this one specific to the roll axis is the problem so you can see pitch moves here are pretty good motor traces are fine it's just those all those roll moves that are really causing the issue and causing the motors to kind of go crazy so let's look back at some of these early ones here. And really what we can do is you can see when these traces are doing this, that's the problem. If we isolate in, now we're going to go to trace setup zero here, and then we're going to expand it to just look at our roll axis. And really this is what you're looking for. So if you see this in your raw trace where you just have this burst of you know, noise that this is not a vibration in the quad. This is like electrical interference or something mechanically wrong with the gyro fingers. And it's starting right when you're, you know, hitting that high electrical demand, either entry of the roll or exit where the motors are spinning up. Like right here, it's calling for the motors to go to full to arrest this, to start to arrest this move. And that's when you start to see that spike. And you can see it over here as well. You can see right here and, and one of the main indicators is just looking at the rotational rates you know we're going it's the gyro is reading here to go from 739 degrees per second and then going all the way down to 484 degrees per second and then that all the way back up to 918 degrees per second and it's doing that initial slowdown and speed back up in three milliseconds and that's just mechanically not possible so that's a vibration or in this case when it's this really just out of the ordinary jut that happens to line up specifically with when motors are peaking for high electrical demand to arrest a move or kick into a move and you see those two things line up that's a sign of a bad gyro this one that we're looking at is pretty subtle but you can see that if you look at 100% zoom and just look at the roll axis, the problem axis, this red line here is the gyro scale debug mode, which is the raw. And you can see it just juts down all of a sudden and juts back up. Obviously, the filters attenuate some of that, but it's still a pretty big jut. And, it, you know, it's not regular. Like motor vibrations will be regular. So you'll see this kind of sinusoidal, you know, oscillation that's pretty consistent you know it will build an amplitude and shrink down but it's not like this sudden where things are smooth you have a whole bunch of jerks and then it smooth again you know it's it's motor vibrations are not going to look like that here you can see it's fairly smooth here and then the uh, the vibrations start to creep in as, as throttles increasing and things of that nature and uh, you know the, the vibrations are pretty consistent and steady whereas these here, you know, it's smooth. You have a whole bunch of jerks, smooth again, you know, smooth, a whole bunch of oscillations and jerks, smooth, one oscill and then here you can see the, the vibrations filtering in. So this is this is a, a case where it's pretty subtle, but it's definitely a bad gyro. And this is confirmed. He replaced the board 
I believe he put another Kukute F7 and the issue was not on the next one. It totally solved the issue. We got, you know, on to tuning this and everything was fine. But, you know, the flight controller needed to be replaced. Now in this next one, we're gonna look at the Luminaire Lux F7. And here, this was a pretty drastic one, again, on the roll axis. Actually, the Lux was on a roll axis as well. Here was a little easier to isolate and see the issue. You can see the motor traces again here on trace template setup number four, specifically at a roll here. And you can see if I go to the roll axis here and look at my roll P term. So let's just flip over to trace template uh, setup number zero. And I can look at roll axis here as well. You can see how this, you know, the gyro signal just bombs down and then comes back up. That is not a vibration. That's not a real movement. That kind of real movement from 238 degrees per second down to negative 531 and then back up to you know, 73, that's just not physically possible. That's Again, it's not a vibration because it's not something that's building up and then you know shrinking back down. It's just all of a sudden this jerk. And it's, again, when you're counting on high amp motor draw, that's uh, where it's veering its ugly head. And you can see it's very much more pronounced in this specific case. You can see here, this one is, is really bad, where it just drops down, just plummets, you know, from 300, 304 down to, you know, negative 784 and then back up to 73 here again as well. So it, it's pretty easy to see once you know what to look for. Um, and here, it didn't happen on this roll. So it's, you know, sometimes it's happening, sometimes it's not. Uh, here it's happening in a big way. It's the opposite direction, but nevertheless, you just have this big jut. Again, the filtering is going to attenuate some of that, but it's still there and it needs to be addressed. And again, here, um, this gentleman for the Lux, he got a couple more. All, he had like five Lux boards. All of them had the issue. He finally got his refund for those and then just switched to a different board manufacturer altogether and Never had any more issues. Didn't change anything on the ESCs, didn't change capacitance or anything else. It was just the flight control board. He's got another flight control board, dimmer manufacturing. He might have even went to Kakuti, I can't recall. Generally, the fix for these is just get a different flight control board. Okay, so that is it. Hopefully that helped you understand what to look for when it comes to checking out what bad gyro data looks like. And once you pinpoint that, really what you need to do, again, is replace that flight control board in my experience. Again, you're looking for it's kind of an oscillation sound. If you hear that, then go to the logs, get a log with gyro scale, look for those juts in the gyro signal, and really, again, just replace that flight control board if you're seeing that kind of stuff. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.